it is raining, but that's God's tears. Okay, here we go. Um, it's an old lady in my neighborhood, y'all. Every morning, she wake up with a Walmart bag and just walks in the neighborhood and pick up trash. Sometimes things, when, when, you know, you can see stuff and just complain about it, or you can see stuff and then fix it. If you don't like what's going on in your neighborhood, you don't like what's going on in the area, you don't like the fact that trash is being thrown, ain't nothing stopping you from getting that and just going like that. Why? Because when people start seeing y'all do that, that's when other people will start joining on and change start coming. Nobody, if they don't see nobody out here that care for this, nobody else gonna care for this. Nobody gonna care for our neighborhood but us. So until we care as hard as we're supposed to, we shouldn't expect nobody else to go in. Just like if I'm not, if Beyonce didn't go hard for herself, nobody else would. If, if Jay-Z didn't go hard for himself, nobody else would. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be, hush your mouth, little moon. Okay. Sometimes you got to go as hard for yourself before anybody else do. Because once they see that you have put full investment, whether it's in your schoolwork, whether it's in your community, whether I'm finna take his headphones because he got music and he ain't listening, see what you're gonna do? <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh. Conversation. You get it back. I ain't no beef now. You get it back. But they mind because you ain't listening. Cause I'm serious, you got to hear this. You playing, but trust me. When y'all get 20, 30, 40, and you standing right here in front of some other children, you're gonna remember this moment right here. Or in front of your own kids. So all I'm saying is, it's raining, it's sprinkling, but that's God's, you know, tears and sweat, however you want to put it. But we have to be the change we want to see. So y'all, I'm gonna show y'all how to get paper. Show how to get that paper. To get clean up paper. our neighborhood. <laughs> and yes, I got my right, daughter here. Let We're gonna be out here until about one o'clock. And we out here with one community one Orlando, Jabril and Stacy doing one community one Orlando revamp Richmond Heights. Me too. We in full support, man. This is a program that employs the kids but teaches them different trades, different different stories as you can hear, and lessons about Orlando, and it's powerful. It's something that I fully support. I suggest supporting. They are taking donations for them. This is something that would get kids actually up to nine dollars an hour on the weekends so it's something that's going to empower them and empower your household too but i'm big in support of jabril facing this program we're out here we have david porter also out here doing some great footage too but we're just supporting what's going on that's what it's all about yes sir well let's get to work before it get too wet out here no no trash left behind <laughs> See? See? Somebody's blanket. This is where they rest at. See? Homelessness. And then they bringing that homeless shelter. Come on now. Do you think they're going to go over there in Spring Lake? No, they're going to come over here and, and catch the bus in these areas. And I don't want to go back here in private, but if you can look, you can tell people live back here too. But I am going to take whoever blanket that is because it's been down here for a minute. Oh my yeah. God. Oh, I hope I don't pick up no dead body. <laughs> <laughs> Shake the bugs out so they can go back in the ground. Fertilize. Let me tell y'all something. Talk to them. Stay the heck away from me doing Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> you would be more of a liability. <laughs> yeah, man, we in Armageddon now, depending on y'all to walk through the woods. I'm leaving y'all behind. You deal with slavery, I'll, I'll shoot you first and leave you for the slave mask. No, man. <laughs> just so we can get shoot away. Him in the shoot him in the leg. Just like um, Kato did that guy on underground. Oh, he's still alive? You still alive, man? Y'all be watching it here. Oh, listen. Underground, right now. Y'all need to watch it. W G N. They supposed to be playing season one, season two coming. Y'all really need to watch it because they're introducing Harriet Tubman. Okay, let me get the whole tips. This ain't no typical slave guest master movie show thingy, okay? This is really a story based upon the slave narratives. The two writers, if you follow them on uh, Twitter, uh, I forgot uh, one of them last name is Green. They literally took the slave narratives. I don't know, a lot of people, I'm not sure which president it was. 
However, right before kind of slavery ended, that particular president had about 100 slaves, 100 or so slaves, uh, document their lives and put it in the U.S. Uh, Library of Congress. So what they did was they took that uh, though they took the slave narratives and they uh, in the stories and uh, did a spinoff from them. So. Uh, a lot of the characters may be fake, however, the storyline itself is true uh, by the most part. From the, I mean, from everything, you got, um, sorry, I'm sweat like a banshee, but um, it, it goes from everything. And I think that is something, if you, if you watched 12 Years a Slave, I've never seen the movie, but if you watched, uh, what's the other, yeah, uh, all them other movies that, that, that said, you know, yes, all that stuff. You really do need to watch Underground because, I mean, it takes you through so many emotions from a slave having a baby and wind up, you know, um, killing, the killing a baby so the baby won't live through, you know, what she went through. From, you know, the, the, the house Negro who uh, was the slave, slave master's mistress who had kids and you saw the difference between the kids. And they had one particular episode in season one and it stuck dearly to me because it's called Cradle. And that particular episode was literally based upon all the children. You had the slave, uh, you had like the patty roller, uh, but he was like, you had his kid, you had the slave master kids, and it, y'all need to watch it. It's uh, based in Macon, Georgia, but give you a little fact, it's not filmed in Macon, Georgia. It is actually filmed on a plantation in um, Louisiana. Okay, um, to give y'all another thing, since this is the last couple of days of Black History Month, uh, I need y'all to go look up the Devil's Punch Bowl. After 18, what was it, 65? We were 18, 65. Okay, I, didn't, I get all these dates mixed up. 1865, we were free. So when we were free, slaves literally walked off the plantation. And when I mean walk, they dropped their stuff, walked off the plantation. Uh, I'm, uh, was it Mississippi? Was it Mississippi in the Devil's Punch Bowl? Well, look at the guy was sitting. Like I said, I know so much history and it's going through my mind right now. But if you look, they took about 20,000 slaves. And as they were, um, well, I hate to call them slaves. They took, and they um, are refugees, whatever you want to call it. And when they took us, they uh, made them walk down this trail, kind of how they did the Native Americans with the Trail of Tears. They made us walk down this trail and it's called the Devil's Punch Bowl. And what they would do is throw people, black people in this valley and make them survive for themselves. Mm -hmm. However, there's right now some old peach trees that grow there in there and uh, the locals won't eat it because they say they know what fertilizes uh, those trees. So I'm just saying, y'all, there's so much we need to know. We are never supposed to forget 9-11. If we're never supposed to get Pearl Harbor, if we're never supposed to get, you know, forget, um, uh, the, 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 you know, all, what, what else they tell us never to forget uh, in, in history? You know, 1776, all that. And we should never forget what our ancestors went through. Because if you knew what they went through, you would respect yourself more and want to be more. Because, well, who was it? Natchez, Mississippi. Natchez? Yeah. It sound like Natchez, but, or nasty ass, Lord forgive me, that would sound like, but that Mississippi, Natchez, Mississippi, but if you look it up, it's called the Devil's Punch Bowl, and there's many other stories, you know what I'm saying, like it. In order for you to understand and take pride in who you are, they're not going to teach you this in school, they're not going to teach you, to, hey, they're not going to teach you this at an HBCU unless you take an African American history class, to be perfectly honest, or an African class, so, um, you got to go and research this knowledge yourself. So I'm just saying, also, oh, another little snippet knowledge. They found uh, 11 churches in Ethiopia. Churches. I keep trying to tell people, Africans or Ethiopians or Kemenitians, whatever you want to call them, people of brown faces, burnt faces, uh, were very spiritual, y'all. Um, they stole everything from us, okay? So I just want y'all to go look that up. There were churches per se, but you go and see what the names are. The only thing we really arguing over really, y'all, is the names. The moral is all the same on whatever religion you believe in. So peace out. Look up your own history. Ain't nobody gonna tell you but you. And you better do it fast because Trump's censoring the internet. I want y'all to realize that. He is censoring the media and the internet. So certain stuff you ain't gonna be able to find them. Up. Yeah, and uh, you know, with that also know where you are. Because all things are local, meaning the things that are happening in this community you need to know about. Division Street is a hot-button issue where 
what was that, about uh, 50, 60 years ago when blacks couldn't quite go across to the rail railroad tracks right here in Orlando, there was a street called Division Street where right now they're trying to uh, peel back that history and paint a new picture. And so right here in our communities, you had the Okoye Massacre. That happened in the 1920s where not a single black person moved back to Okoye until 1980. So there's a lot of things happening right here, right now, that you need to know about. And it takes opening your mind. It takes being uh, a steward of education and talking to people who have the experience and education it takes to help propel our communities forward. So with that being said, we're trying to leave no trash left behind in our neighborhood because this community means a lot to us. These are the uh, homes where our grandparents and our parents came from. And it's our time now as millennials and folks who, grad, uh, who were born after 2000 to step up to make an impact in our community. So we thank everyone for, our, for your support. Please visit onecommunity1orlando.org. Visit us on Facebook. We're asking for $1 a month to help 25 kids on a monthly base come out here and do exactly what you're seeing. So I thank each and every one of you. Thank Miles. Also, big big ups to let your voice be heard. I got to get me some T-shirts. Get y'all a T-shirt too. Love y'all. Let's get to work. All right, man. We're back out cleaning, man. You heard the man. Welcome to the 1 Orlando.org. Showing support to all these young teens and what they're doing. Much love to everybody who's watching.